All right, so since we're all running over, can everybody hear me okay? Is this good? Hello? Test, test. Okay, so uh, some of you probably have seen some of my stuff before, data recovery, diagnostics, repairs, things like that. So, uh, so basically that's what this talk is about, is actually doing the pre-stuff to any of the other talks that I've done. Uh, basically I'm going to be looking at hard drives and trying to do the diagnostic component so that you can try to figure out what's wrong with it before. Later on, um, all my other talks, which is kind of what this next thing is, uh, all the other talks I've done have been all about repairing the drive, but I get tons of emails about what's wrong with my drive before that actually happens. So, uh, and a lot of the assumptions are wrong. I mean, I get some weird things like, uh, I've got a MacStore 160 gig hard drive, can I pull the platters out and put them in a, a Western Digital 160 gig hard drive and recover my data, things like that. So, uh, so basically, I kind of want to take a step back and just try to say, what can we do to repair hard drives? You know, look at the diagnostic component before we actually get to the repair component. I've got some repair stuff in here. This is a little different than some of my other stuff because uh, it's, this is basically a conglomeration of the thousands of steps you could take to actually look at a hard drive to figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, and it's a little different than what most people would actually think in some cases. So, so that's kind of the, the point of this. And then the idea is, too, is that eventually at some point in time, if you just watch all the videos, because I've got like 50 hours of stuff out there on how to do data recovery and repair stuff. Uh, I run a data recovery company. I've been running it for uh, 10 years now. I uh, pretty much have everything that there is. I also teach the SANS data recovery class, which I wrote, and do things for like FBI, CIA, things like that. So, uh, so basically that's my job is to try to get drives running again that are damaged if it's possible. And then uh, I got a lot of ugly text, but I got a lot of pictures and videos from things I've collected over the years of either weird problems or things that happen, and I'm going to just, you know, call things that suck, suck. This is the kind of the point of the breakdown of the steps that I'm looking at, uh, because this is where people are at, at where they go, hey, I've got a problem with my hard drive, but I don't know where to start and when to stop, because some people go way too far. I mean, they get into a spot where they've, they have ripped out the platters and done something else, and they really need the data off that drive, but they've already gone too far. And so I'm also going to try to be bringing up where to stop and kind of look at that position and try to figure out how, how detrimental what you're about to do is to the drive. Because some people just jump right in and be like, oh, I need to replace the heads and try to rip the heads off before they even know if it's actually the heads that are wrong or that there's something wrong with. So I'm going to try to break those, those things down. Uh, some things are not going to be quite quite as obvious as this, okay? So it's pretty obvious when you've got a burnt board most of the time. Most people are pretty clear on what that kind of problem is going to be. They may not be clear on how to fix it. In some cases, this might actually be hidden because the board might be upside down. So before we jump into this, I'm going to kind of do like just a quick 10-minute quick kind of education, some previous stuff I've done, and some ideas about the hard drive so that you can build on it as we go through the diagnostics so you can kind of understand what's going on. So, so this is the first, th first thing. Don't be anxious to swap parts. That's the last thing anybody should do. Uh, you really have to know whether or not you're able to read a byte off that drive or know what kind of data that you're looking at. A lot of people will be, hey, my drive doesn't mount. What am I going to do? And so they think right away, oh, well, then I've got to start swapping boards or I've got to start swapping heads and things like that. And in a lot of cases, you can actually do more damage even just by swapping a board. The boards actually know things like the voltage of some of the chips that are actually mounted on the head assemblies. And if you, uh, if you just do a board swap without thinking about it or knowing what's going on, you can actually apply a different voltage to the internal mechanism that blows the chip, which then causes you to have to do a head replacement, which you normally would not have had to do. So, so we're going to at least take a little bit of a step back before you get there. So don't cause more suck. So real quick, this is just kind of the five basic fundamentals of when you're doing data recovery, what your steps are. So physically, you would normally be looking at diagnostics. Then if you can't, because you're going to kind of jump to this step, which is imaging, so a lot of people think of imaging, oh, I'm just copying the drive. There's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot more to, I just have a piece of software and I copied a drive. Uh, this is actually the fundamental stage is imaging for every data recovery company. And these three are linked together. So you start your diagnostics by trying to do imaging, finding out whether or not certain things are wrong. And there are certain pieces of equipment which will actually just give you answers right up front, but there are thousands and thousands of dollars. So we're going to try to take the cheap route. Uh, and then you would go through this process in a circle. Repair the hard drive, image it, try to go through this process. The whole point is to forget about files. We're not, we're not looking at files. Stop thinking about drives and files. The drive physically has all these things that are going on inside of it first before you're actually dealing with the files. 
And it doesn't care about your files. It doesn't know anything about your files or your file structure or how your OS laid out clusters or whatever you chose for your inode settings or something along those lines. So forget about files when you're trying to do data recovery. Let's take a step back and let's start talking about sectors and LBA blocks and how we're actually going to copy those sectors off of the drive and what we're going to do with them. And so this would kind of be y'all's response. Well, look, I plugged the drive in and I tried to copy it. Dude, this doesn't work or I would have done that. So let's try to look at that item itself. So these are going to be the things to suck that we're going to get out of the way. So we're just going to remove these things from the picture so that you at least get a better idea what we're looking at. So imaging tools, diagnostic tools, vendor tools, things like that. Uh, software repairs like check disk and things, horrible things. Freezing the drive, smart, and USB. So what is wrong with these? Anybody have a good idea what's wrong with these? Well, besides you pay for them. I mean, some good tools you pay for, but I'm just saying, as a whole, this is typically when people go, oh, I'm going to image or I'm going to do a backup. This is the kind of stuff that they're looking at. Well, these kind of things, typically, any time that you're dealing with bad sectors or a bad hard drive, they are worthless. They completely fail. They, I mean, how many people have tried to use Ghost before and you read a bad sector and what happened? Just bombs, crashes, or hangs and never comes back. Even if you've tried to use things like FTK Imager or something like that, Forensics Toolkits Imager, what happens when you get to a bad sector? It just sits there and chunks on it, or you get an image that has just zeros in it. So you don't have anything. That doesn't mean you couldn't copy it. That doesn't mean you could not get those sectors back. It just meant that trying to do a sequential image with a dumb piece of software that doesn't know how to control the drive can't do the job. And that's where our problem stops. So this is, this is the kind of stuff that just sucks. And so you know, stop thinking in those terms. And so if you want to do, if you want to deal with damn piece of... Fail, fail, fail. All right, so if you want to deal with a little bit more ro robust software, now I'm not going to kid you that when you're actually dealing with hardware errors and things like that, hardware does do the best job. It's not that there isn't a software solution. It's just software typically is going to cause more problems from a time standpoint. It's going to take a lot longer to do it. And software can't control power. So that's the biggest problem. Like if a drive hangs, Sometimes like a head will actually be reading data, it will hit a spot, and after that spot, it will never return a result again until it's been powered off and powered back on again. All those other imaging products that you've been dealing with to image sectors and do things are not capable of picking back up after a failure, and they're not capable of turning the power off. And so they're always sequential. Almost all of them do from the, the lowest LBA, the lowest sector, to the end of the drive, and they don't know how to do anything else. They don't know how to just randomly start at a new location. So that's where some of your other problems come in. But since we're looking at kind of the cheap, free, easy kind of thing, all of these typically at the top, they're not all free, but uh, like My Rescue on Linux and DD Rescue, and there's two, two different versions of DD Rescue. There's an underscore and one without an underscore. Uh, they actually are fantastic at recovering from damaged sectors or dealing with something. But for people who like to click on things, uh, Media Tools Pro is about $300. It can do what's called a reverse image. Uh, and that's kind of the trick with some of these is that they can do reverse imaging. And then there's this free tool, the Ultimate Boot CD, which has a lot of things pre-prepared for you. It's got a bunch of these other things already on it uh, with the exception of the Linux tools and stuff because it's like a, a DOS boot floppy kind of thing from a CD standpoint. But MHDD is the tool that I'm looking for. I'm looking to do some basic diagnostics and kind of get some feedback. And just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like if I was able to do a reverse image, because this is what we're dealing with when we're dealing with sectors that are damaged and you have a product that can only do sequential imaging. You want a product that can skip around. You want a piece of software or a tool that can skip around. And DD Rescue will be able to skip around. DD won't be able to skip around. So you'll have some issues with that. But at least from this standpoint, this is what it's going to look like now. This will be already, this movie is going to basically be in the middle of an image where imaging forward, where it hit bad sectors, would be where FTK and all the others would already fail. It's going to leave those sectors alone and skip them. And now we're going to come backwards and we're looking at the data in reverse. And you're going to be able to see that. So this is what this tool does. Basically, it's kind of mesmerizing. You can actually see in hex as it's reading these sectors. And the ones that it's leaving alone have not been read. They're not successfully read. All of these going forward the first time were left alone. This was stuff FTK or some other tool could not do. And they would have just hung right there and they wouldn't have completed. And so it stopped. This is the end of the movie. But, uh, but that's the point, is that this was now running from the end of the disk backwards.